Congress is about to make a huge mistake on climate change. We have the greatest respect for Congress and the President, but the climate bill they are currently supporting is fatally flawed. The bill is called the American Clean Energy and Security Act, or Waxman Markey, sponsors of the House bill for short. This climate bill narrowly passed the House in June, and a similar bill is likely to reach the Senate in September. The push to launch this climate bill reminds us of the ill-fated launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger. The people responsible for the Challenger launch refused to listen to the rocket designers with the experience to know the shuttle was fatally flawed. This failure to listen resulted in tragedy. We are speaking out because our political leaders are getting bad advice and are not listening to those who understand the flaws of the climate bill. We are speaking out as parents, citizens, a married couple, and attorneys. Our opinions are based on more than 20 years each, working as attorneys at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in the San Francisco Regional Office. However, nothing in this video is intended to represent the views of EPA or the Obama administration. Scientists are convinced that further delay in cutting greenhouse gases means an unacceptable risk of climate catastrophe. U.S. military analysts see the potential for major threats to national security from climate change during the next 20 to 30 years. This video provides an overview of why Congress is getting it wrong and how they could be getting it right in three segments we call The Big Lie, The Big Ripoff, and The Real Solution. The climate bill currently before Congress relies on a cap-and-trade approach. So what is cap-and-trade? Cap-and-trade means facilities cut their emissions each year until the goal is achieved. Total pollution is capped. If some facilities have more trouble cutting their emissions than others, they can trade by buying more permits to pollute. The big lie is that EPA's experience with cap-and-trade in the acid rain program proved that cap-and-trade will work for climate change. While cap-and-trade worked fairly well in the acid rain program, the needed changes there were relatively easy tweaks to existing coal-fired power plants. Most acid rain reductions came from switching to lower sulfur coal. Some facilities added pollution scrubbers, but the solutions involved little new infrastructure and almost no innovation. In contrast, climate change can't be solved by tweaks to existing facilities. It requires cutting fossil fuel emissions to the atmosphere, which are the main cause of climate change. It requires an energy revolution through investments in building new clean energy facilities, such as wind, geothermal, and solar. And, if proven safe and effective, advanced designs of nuclear power and underground sequestration of fossil fuel emissions. But energy from the uncontrolled use of fossil fuels is cheap, and clean energy remains expensive. Investors will not risk their money unless they know clean energy will become cost competitive with uncontrolled fossil fuels within a known time frame. Cap and trade will not create confidence that clean energy will become profitable, and so it will not ignite the huge shift in investment needed to begin the clean energy revolution. Cap and trade for climate change has been tried in Europe. It produced harmful volatility in energy prices and few greenhouse gas reductions. It raised energy prices for consumers and made billions in windfall profits for utilities. Even the economists who came up with the cap-and-trade idea don't believe it's an appropriate tool for addressing climate change. In addition, Congress's cap-and-trade plan includes carbon offsets, an integrity-destroying add-on which was not part of the acid rain program. Our next segment, The Big Ripoff, explains why offsets don't work. To keep cap-and-trade cheap, Congress's climate plan would allow all required greenhouse gas reductions for almost 20 years to be met with carbon offsets from the U.S. and abroad. Carbon offsets are greenhouse gas reductions outside the capped sources. They are supposed to be additional reductions beyond what is legally required or would have happened anyway. Here is a simple example of a carbon offset and its problems. I pay you not to cut down an acre of your forest so your forest can continue capturing CO2 from the atmosphere. The offset allows me to burn extra coal above the cap at my coal-fired power plant. But maybe you weren't planning to cut your forest and you have received a bonus to do what you would have done anyway. Even if you were planning to cut your forest and now you don't, demand for the wood doesn't go away, so a different forest will be cut. 
In either case, there is no reduction in greenhouse gases. The only result of the offset program is an increase in greenhouse gases from my burning extra coal above the cap. In a global economy, almost any activity can be shifted. It is virtually impossible to know whether a damaging activity has simply moved elsewhere. A second carbon offset example from the European experience is the production of a refrigerant that creates an extremely powerful greenhouse gas as a byproduct. This byproduct is relatively easy and cheap to capture and destroy. So most of us might think, okay, let's require refrigerant manufacturers to destroy this dangerous byproduct. But no, offset investors had the brilliant idea of selling its destruction as a carbon offset. This made it twice as profitable to sell destruction of the byproduct as it was to sell the actual refrigerant. This offset program has created two perverse incentives. First, investors and their host countries have fought to keep release of the byproduct legal. Otherwise, destruction of the byproduct would not create offsets because the reductions would no longer be additional. Second, investors have had an incentive to make unneeded refrigerant just to make extra money on the byproduct offsets. Even though regulators recognize these perverse incentives, they have been unable to slam the lid on the cookie jar. The profits have been too high and the demand for cheap offsets too persistent. In my work at EPA, I have been overseeing California's cap-and-trade and offset programs for more than 20 years. My unique and extensive experience has convinced me that carbon offsets won't work. They can't be certified or verified as real additional reductions. Since the most flawed offsets are generally cheapest, they will be most in demand. These flawed offsets will make it look like we're getting greenhouse gas reductions when we're just getting business as usual. Like the subprime mortgages and other creative financial instruments that helped bring us the current recession, carbon offsets lack integrity. They make easy profits for offset investors while increasing the risk of climate disaster for all of us. That is the big ripoff. There is a real, affordable, and effective solution to climate change. Just no powerful, moneyed interest to push for it. We call this solution carbon fees with rebates. The biggest obstacle to successfully addressing climate change is that uncontrolled fossil fuel energy is a lot cheaper than clean energy. The real solution must change this. There are two critical parts of the real solution. First, we need to make sure that clean energy becomes cost competitive with uncontrolled fossil fuel energy within a known time frame. Second, we need to make sure that the energy people need remains affordable. To do this, we must gradually phase in carbon fees slowly raising the price of uncontrolled fossil fuels until they are more expensive than the clean energy alternatives we have today. This transition can begin very gradually during the current recession and be phased in over the next 10 to 15 years. To keep energy affordable, carbon fees must be given back to consumers in monthly per person rebates. While consumers will still have an incentive to choose energy efficiency, monthly rebates will ensure that everyone can afford the energy they need. As people realize that uncontrolled fossil fuel energy will soon be more expensive than clean energy, investment will shift. Investors will abandon plans for new coal-fired power plants without sequestration and for development of dirty energy sources such as shale oil and tar sands. Investment will shift to clean energy projects. Clean energy prices will fall because of competition, economies of scale, and innovation. There are no powerful special interests lobbying for this real solution but many prominent economists agree it would be effective. If the United States adopts carbon fees with rebates and seeks agreements with other countries to adopt similar programs, our country can lead the world toward a clean energy future. Cap and trade with offsets provides a false sense of progress and puts money in the pockets of offset investors. Carbon fees with rebates means we put money back in our own pockets. We set in motion the powerful shift in incentives needed to establish U.S. leadership in clean energy. This video is a call to action for carbon fees with rebates to become the popular as well as the wise choice. Your participation is crucial. You can make a difference from your home or public library by calling and emailing your senators and the president, by telling your friends and family. We hope you will consider telling them the current bill chooses weak targets and inappropriate tools, that it misses the real solution. We appreciate your consideration. This is America. We can do better. We can get it right.